This is the Play Your Position podcast, where we huddle up, call the plays, and inspire you to run your ball into the end zone. Are you ready to score more game-winning touchdowns in your life, business, and career? Then listen up, because it's game time, baby. Now, here's your host, Mary Lou Kayser. Hey, Team PYP, Mary Lou Kayser here. Welcome to today's episode of the Play Your Position podcast. As always, I am super excited that you decided to join me today. I've got another Audible in store for you, and as the title suggests, I'm I'm going to be talking about what happens when we find ourselves facing life in a way that we did not plan. And there's a meme that has been going around the internet forever and a day, I think probably since the beginning, way back in the 90s, that statement, things won't go as planned. And I suspect that you have experienced this. And the question becomes, what do we do when the plans we thought we were following are now irrelevant? And I'm going to share with you some situations from my personal life and how it relates to my work here at PYP and my work as a writer and just showing up to life. And, you know, I would see that statement, things won't go as planned. Intellectually, I knew that it was true. And like I used to do before scrolling on to the next thing, I, I just wouldn't take the message to heart. Not really. You know, why should I? Things were going along the way things were going along. And then they weren't. And that, so that brings up, you know, a lot of us, and again, I'm presuming here that many of you listening have created what's known as a vision board. It's when you sit down with a larger than an eight and a half by 11, although you can use eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, but usually you're using a poster size piece of paper and you map out the goals and dreams that you want to manifest in your life using words and oftentimes cutting out images from magazines. At least that's the kind of vision boards that I have made over the years. And interestingly enough, I have vision boards that I made way back. It seems like the dark ages now in the 2000s. And recently when I was moving, I found them in a closet. They were rolled up. I don't know why I saved them, but I did. And I looked at them and they, they were four years worth of vision boards. And I, let me tell you, everything on those boards pretty much had manifested in my life. Not the exact image, right? But the concept behind the image. I was, I was actually floored. I was like, wow, this actually happened for me. So there is something to be said about imagining what we what we want, you know, dreaming, having the big vision. Uh, lots and lots of guests I've had over the years on this show have talked about the power of using your imagination and dreaming really, really big, not just setting a goal that you know you can achieve or one that feels slightly uncomfortable, but, you know, really going for it, talking about you know, 10Xing your current monthly income, for example, or getting the land, that 10 acre acre or 20 acre parcel of land and building your dream house on it. You know, not just moving to a parallel type of home in another part of town, but really imagining those big things. So like a lot of people that move in this personal development circle, I've taken vision boards seriously. But let me tell you, when my life blew up two years ago in the fall of 2021, I just said vision boards be damned, okay? (laughs) Because I didn't have one vision board or one inkling about where my life was headed. Now, the pandemic at that time was still in full swing. 
like a lot of people, I had adjusted to the changes that event brought us all, and I had my next set of goals lined up. Back in 2021, I was in my second or third year of writing a letter to myself every day, and I have that stack of letters, and it's really interesting when I go and just pull one out, you know, and I read it from, say, March of 2020. I really am amazed at how powerful a process like that can be in terms of dictating the direction we take our lives. So again, in the fall of 2021, my North Star, as I like to call it, was clearly in my sights. It was shining bright. And that was that. And then, and then (laughs) the metaphorical storm rolled in, blacking out the sky and every sense of direction I thought I was following no longer was there in front of me. Forget all those vision boards I'd made in recent years. Forget the stack of paper, you know, of paper with letters to myself. My mom got COVID, the Delta variant, in August of 2021. She was hospitalized for three days. She is immunocompromised. If they had put her on a vent, she would not be alive today. I'm convinced of that. She has got the will, she's got an iron will to live. And so she came home from the hospital. We were in our summer place and she felt good for about a week. And then she got slammed with long COVID, symptoms of long COVID. And believe it or not, to this day, she still experiences some shortness of breath, uh, getting tired a little bit faster. And I, I understand she's two years older, but COVID really knocked her for a loop, but she did survive. And so as a result of that, I chose not to return to the Northwest after being on vacation for a month in the Northeast, which is what I've been doing for, you know, my whole life, basically. And when I moved West, I would come East, I bring my children and we would spend time with my parents in, in Maine. And I could tell that my dad just didn't have the capacity to care for mom the way he had been and the house and do all the things because mom doesn't drive. Um, She's got to have people take her to her medical appointments. She needs people to, she can't, she can't cook at the stove. Um, She's semi-independent but her mobility is compromised and it's just the way it is. My dad was her full-time caregiver. And so I thought, you know, my kids are launched. I'm just going to stick around. I'll get him back to New York. I'll get him settled in and then I'll head back to the Northwest. Well, guess what? That didn't happen. October came and went. I, I could see immediately upon returning to New York that there was no way my dad had what he once did to manage the house the grocery shopping, the cooking, the cleaning, the laundry, taking care of mom and taking care of himself. So I thought, well, I'll just, again, I'll stick around. I work remotely. I had all my equipment um, to continue the podcast and my writing and, and, and do client work. So no big deal. Okay. That, that wasn't a huge transition. And I figured maybe by the holidays, I would head back out. They would get a rhythm going. Maybe we'd find some outside help to come in three days a week or something just to ease the, the pressure on my dad. And then guess what? He died unexpectedly and very suddenly that November. So we got, we were back from, back from Maine less than two months and he was gone. And suddenly nothing in my life looked familiar because I did not skip a beat. I didn't even think. It, it, it was a millisecond at most. And I decided I'm stepping into dad's role here. I just not, mom is not going to miss a beat in terms of being cared for. So in the blink of an eye team, here's what happened to me. I became my mom's full-time caregiver. She has Parkinson's and can't live independently. Like I was just saying, I moved from one coast to another back into the home and the town I grew up in. And if I'm being honest, 
I could not wait to get out of here at 18. I was so excited to leave this place and start my life in the Northwest. Never in a million years did I imagine I'd be living here again. This was not on my vision board. This was not part of my plan, right? I was also consumed with grief for the loss of my dad and the loss of my life as I'd known it. And in the midst of all that, I had to keep going. You know, there was no time to sit around and process everything. It was like, no, one thing, you know, when you lose a parent, now you're looking at estate issues and meetings with lawyers and uh, dealing with funeral arrangements. And what about the celebration of life and contacting all these people to let them know? And then, you know, handling the correspondence and my mother is grieving and my brother is weary, just everybody, you know, it's, it's crazy. Now, simultaneously, simultaneously, I also, during this time, this big transition, I wrote and published my sixth book, The Far and Lit Unknown. It's arguably the most vulnerable, personal, and powerful book I've written yet. Um, I kept this podcast going. I continued to interview incredible people who answer the call to leadership every day. And that was something that I did question very briefly, you know, and then I realized, you know what, this is, this show is a conduit between myself and the outside world. Those of you who listen to me and my interviews and my audibles like today mean a lot to me. I know some of you who listen and there are those of you who I don't know. And just sitting in front of the mic and expressing myself either again through a solo episode like today or expressing a bigger idea through a conversation with someone who is doing amazing work in the world. This fuels me. This keeps me anchored to humanity. And in turn, my my goal, of course, with the show is to provide value, provide content that gives you food for thought, that challenges you to look at your own life and ask some big questions and, and focus on your own journey and being as real as you can so that you are playing your position to the best of your ability. And listen, I get it. We, we, not every day is going to be a great day. Not every day are we going to be the superstar of our lives. There's going to be days when we want to bench ourselves and sometimes we do, right? So I kept my podcast going. That was a good thing. I also discovered how resilient and strong I really am. This change has challenged every paradigm (laughs) that I ever developed over my life. And I've had to stare at them straight in the face and ask, honestly, are you serving me anymore? Does this idea, this notion of what it means to be me really serve me anymore? And let me tell you, that work has been deep. It has been difficult. It has been powerful. It has been so rewarding. And then I'm, I've made new friends and I've deepened existing friendships. Okay. So yes, in the blink of the, of an eye, the, all those things have changed. And then also all these other things that changed and none, not one of these things were on my next level goal list. Now, yes, I had planned to write another book, Definitely not the one I ended up writing. The Far Unlit Unknown, I say to this day, was truly, I channeled that from the universe. I really did. It came to me and I was just the the, the vessel through which those words came. And I'm, I'm immensely proud of this book and I know it has touched many lives and will continue to touch lives. At the time of the uh, personal upheaval, right, that I was going through. Like I just got done saying, my podcast, this podcast here, um, had been a very significant part of my creative work for almost eight years at the time. And I had no intentions of moving on from it. Everything else, though, I could not have imagined in a million years. And, you know, what's that old saying? Have you ever, (laughs) have you ever seen this one floating around meme land? 
Um, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans, right? Or her, however you see it, or they in, in today's lexicon, right? Make plans, God laughs. Until I experienced this dramatic change two years ago, the message about things won't go as planned had no soil in which to take root in my life. Yes, I had experienced some detours. Yes, some rerouting. Yes, I had. But nothing, nothing of this magnitude. And I honestly, I just don't think any of us can know what it's like until we experience the blow up, whatever that blow up looks like. Now today, those roots are growing fast and furiously. They're feeding and nourishing the tree of me in ways I could never have imagined, right? Um, boy, did I have different plans. <laughs> I know my North Star is up there. It's shining brightly, even when storms roll in, as they do. And yeah, once in a while, we're going to lose sight of that North Star. But it's not until we experience something big or sudden or unexpected that we're going to sit up and take notice and we're going to go, all right, yes, I can't see that North Star, but I know it's still there and I trust. I trust. And that ultimately, team, is the point of today's Audible, that we sit up and take notice about our lives and what matters more often, that we truly go deep and ask the big questions, especially about the paradigms that are driving our decisions. Taking the time to dig down past the surface layer and then the layer under that and then the layer under that and really look at where is this coming from? Why do I respond the way I do? Why do I keep choosing this over that? Why is my life the way it is right now, right? And then that we accept that no matter how much we believe we are in control, we are definitely not boy, I, like everybody else, I want to think that I am in 100% control of my life. And I'm not. I, I, I'm this, these last two years show me just staring me in the face, not even a question that we're not in, in control. All right. Now we can employ different things to give us a sense that we are. Okay. And I think that's important. I do it. I use a calendar. I mean, controlling my time, what, what, you know, where do I plug in different parts of my life during each day and week and month and year? And if you're asking some big questions right now about yourself, about your circumstances, about your life, take heart and have faith that things will work out, perhaps not as planned, all right, perhaps with a lot of tears and frustration. <laughs> and yes, four letter words coming out of your mouth a million miles an hour at times. I get it. I've been there. I've heard those words come out of my mouth. And I'm still fighting some fights with myself and coming to terms with how things are. I'm still adjusting to the changes and I can't tell you for how much longer I will be because life is constantly changing. So I guess I'm constantly adjusting. But even though these last two years have been the hardest of my life, they've also been the most fulfilling. And I mean that absolutely 100% from my soul. Outside of raising my kids, nothing has come close to how enriching and rewarding and beautiful these last two years have been despite the sorrow, the loss, the grieving, the uncertainty, the questions, the physical change of my environment. Things won't go as planned. And honestly, despite all the heartbreak and change, sorrow and uncertainty. I would not want my life to be any other way. Being able to accept things as they are, it ain't easy, guys. It is not. 
It is not. And boy, I have so much respect for people who are much farther along on this journey than I am and are able to graciously accept everything as it comes at them. Uh, I'm still fighting, but I'm also more receptive to this idea that things won't go as planned and it's going to be okay and it's not going to be okay. And all of that, all of that is part of why we're here and what we're meant for. All right. So I hope these words have been meaningful to you in some way. And, um, you know, I always like to end my episodes with the mantra of it's always a great day to get out there and play your position, even if things won't go as planned, still do it. The world needs you to show up and you need you to continue to show up. And I believe in you. And I'm, again, just thankful that there are places that we can openly talk about things that are hard and also exquisite. And that's life. So I will end this today by saying, make it a great day, Team PYP. Got some great episodes about ready to drop coming next week. Stay tuned for those. In the meantime, get out there and play your position to the fullest of your ability. This is Mary Lou Kayser. We will catch you again next time. Here at the Play Your Position podcast, we believe that the road to self-mastery and a life well-lived starts with answering the call to leadership. That's when the fun really begins. Send this episode to any friends who might need to hear the inspiration and ideas you heard today. And feel free to rate and review us on your favorite podcast platform. 